God bless you guys. It's Coach Timothy here. I pray that you've all had a wonderful weekend and a blessed Sunday. Um, I'm here today with a, with another prophetic word of encouragement um, from the Lord. And as with all prophetic words, you do want to make sure that you're taking it to the Lord in prayer. If you feel like the word resonates with you, you want to make sure that you are hearing God clearly for yourself and that these words that you are hearing are not just... Um, words that are resonating with their words of confirmation and that also you can take it back to the Lord to receive instructions uh, concerning the word that you're hearing. Okay. Um, I always say, according to first John chapter four, to make sure that you are testing the spirits to see whether they be of God or not. Sometimes they are of people's flesh and sometimes they are of, of the enemy. So you always want to make sure that you are hearing God correctly and that you are testing the spirits in Jesus name. So guys, um, as with all of the prophetic words that um, the Lord allows me to release on this channel, I do want to make sure that I say a prayer first, and so I'm going to pray. Father God, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, for yet another opportunity to be able to impart what you're speaking in this hour to your people. I pray right now, Father, that these words that you cause me to release today, Lord God, would be edifying, exhorting, and comforting to your people, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray you, Lord God, that you will cause your people, Lord God, to hear your voice clearly and to know what you are saying and that they can go to you for themselves, Lord God, to, to, hear, the, uh, to hear your instructions about what it is that you want them to do with this word. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that you will make it easy for them, Lord God, to be able to know that it is you speaking to their heart in this hour. I decrease myself now that you may increase in me, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I ask you to put your hands upon my mouth and put your fingers upon my tongue, my tongue and guide my words as I as I impart this word into your people. Father, I declare and decree right now that no weapon formed against me or this word shall be able to prosper in every tongue that rises up against me or this word in judgment. I do now condemn it in the mighty name of Jesus, and it is so in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Guys, so this word today is a very special word from the Lord. It's a really good word. And um, I, I just want to get into, before I get into the word, I want to... Um, to break it down a little bit about what this day in particular is. Today is, um, it's the beginning of a new Hebrew month and it's the Hebrew month of Tammuz. Now I have, I've always, you know, I, I've always been into, um, you know, learning about what the Hebrew months are about, where they come from, where they derive from and things like this. I'm, I'm very studious of Hebrew. And so, um, but I never under, I never realized until yes, well, when the Lord gave me this word, yeah, on July 6th, uh, I, I didn't realize this until yesterday that the first day of Tammuz um, is also Joseph's birthday and death. So, I was very intrigued by this because I was like, wow, Lord, why are you showing me this now? Um, I studied, I started studying Hebrew four years ago and, you know, biblical Hebrew. And um, for Tammuz, Tammuz is the 10th month of the, the Hebrew civil calendar, but it is the fourth month of the Hebrew religious calendar. So this is now, uh, it, it's, I, I find it very intriguing that the Lord has given me this word to release today because we are currently in the, the Hebrew year 5784 and 84 represents, so 80 is the, is the year of the mouth, uh, the decade of the mouth but it also represents the decade of entry, of, of, of entering into something, of something that has been opened. And so <clears throat> it also represents commanding something. It also represents speaking something. And so this is the decade of the mouth. But the fourth, uh, the number four in Hebrew, in, as, in, in reference to the Hebrew letters of the, of the alphabet, the fourth Hebrew letter is the letter Dalet. And Dalet literally represents a door. And so the year 5784 represents the entry into an open door. Um, some people um, say it's the year of the door. It's the year of, of, of speaking, commanding the door or whatever. But it's the year um, of the door. 
That's that's for sure. And so I, I look at it the way the Lord revealed it to me is that it's the year of entering into the open door. And so this word that the Lord gave me today um, in, in particular, because Tammuz, uh, the first day of Tammuz actually began at sundown yesterday on, the, on July 6th. We, this is now July 7th. It's still the first day of Tammuz until sundown. And so um, the Lord really wanted me to get this word out. Why? Um, because this word is, is <laughs> again, it's a special word. And I just wanted to say that this is what the Lord is saying. The Lord says, happy birthday, Joseph's. This word is my herald to publicly announce that I am conferring my gift upon the Joseph's ready to rule. Now, another word for birth is delivery. So this is also a herald to say happy delivery day. A delivery is what? The supply or provision of something. So what is a herald? A herald is a sign that something is about to happen. A herald is also an official messenger that brings news. So the Lord wants me to bring you this news today, guys, that something is about to happen. You have been birthed. The Joseph. So this word today is for the Josephs. For those of you that have gone through uh, what you needed to go through to become elevated and promoted in this new season where you are now stepping into your governorship, into your role, into your leadership, into all those of you who are also set to go into business, into commerce, into entrepre entrepreneurship. Um, this word is for you guys. You have been birthed. You've gone through the process. The Lord is saying that this day marks the day that, in other words, this is the day of completion. Because why? I, I, I felt led in the spirit to like just search, like what does a birthday represent, right? We know that a birthday is always, you know, a special day, right? But a birthday has different meanings. So I, 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 I did this search and I let the Lord minister to me on what the search was saying. And so one of the things that says a birthday can be a time to celebrate yourself, to acknowledge your unique contributions and boost your self-esteem, right? So that's a way of self uh, self affirmation. So I I the way I interpreted it when I was reading this is that the Lord is like affirming you in this hour. You are being affirmed in this hour. This is what the birthing means. Like you have been birthed. The Lord has affirmed you. And so also another thing about birthdays is that birthdays can be an opportunity to show gratitude for the people in your life. The Lord is getting ready to show you his appreciation for you. He's getting ready to show you that because you did what he told you to do, he's getting ready to show you what it feels like to be appreciated by the Lord. Um, birthdays can be a reminder of your existence and a time to celebrate the milestones that you have achieved. You, you're getting ready to celebrate all that you have accomplished because you did it. You, you made it. You made it through. You, you passed the test that God put you through. You, you succeeded in your own personal Job experience. And so now this life's journey has come to an end. You're getting ready to enter into a new journey now. Like this is your new journey. It begins. This is the start of a new journey for you. And so another thing about birthdays, birthdays can represent another year of growth and lessons learned. So this is a time of growth for you as well. You're getting ready to begin to grow in your, in, in your ministry, in your calling, in your purpose. As a Joseph, you are getting ready to, 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 to really grow in this season. And so birthdays can also be a time to pause and reflect on what on on all that you are and have been. So it's going to be a time for you to be able to look back on all that you've accomplished, on all that you've done, on on everything that you've experienced. So like you're going to be able to remember like, wow, everything that you went through was a learning lesson, was an, was was something for you to glean knowledge from um, in in preparation for what you are getting ready to enter into now in this in this new life. Now, guys, I'm telling you, my door is open, so I don't want you guys to get distracted. You're going to hear those planes. Um, the last thing about birthdays is that it can give you a sense of accomplishment and validation and a time to celebrate your achievements. You're getting ready to enter into a time of being celebrated for everything that you have done. The Lord is getting ready to celebrate you. You're getting ready to be celebrated. Now, now going back to Tammuz, Tammuz itself 
first of all, it's not a Hebrew word. Tammuz is actually um, a Babylonian word coming, you know, from the Mesopotamian area era. And so Tammuz was actually a, a god. Uh, um, it was a god, a, a god of fertility. But they even it's not only still adopted, you know, in the Hebrew um, as one of the months, but also in Arabic. So Tammuz was a was a god of fertility. So fertility is just another word for abundance of multi, uh, of increase of multitude, right? And so when I just lost my place, guys. I'm sorry. Oh, Tammuz. So when 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 the each each Hebrew month is associated with a tribe and also a letter. Now the Hebrew month of Tammuz is also a very important month because it's a month where um, the, the Israelites, the Hebrews were getting ready to enter into the promised land. And so Joshua had sent over the, was it Joshua? No, Moses sent over the 12 spies. I believe it's the 12 spies. Caleb and Joshua were the only two I believe that did not come back with a bad report about the promised land. And I remember that they went into the Valley of Eshkol, E-S-H-C-O-L, Eshkol. And when they came back, the Bible talks about how they had, it took two people to carry one bunch of grapes. That's how big and fruitful and prosperous the, the promised land was. And so the 10, uh, tw 10 of the 12 spies came back and they were afraid because they saw the giants in the land. They saw all of these things. Um, that were happening that that would make them fear going into the land, even though God told them that he had given them the land to take, you know, to possess. But they went into the land. Two of them came back, Caleb, and I believe it was Joshua. Those were the only two that came back and said, no, God has given us this fruitful land. We're going to take it. We're going to possess it. We're going to do everything that we need. And so, guys, that is what has happened for you. You went in and you you did not fear. You were like the Caleb's and the Joshua's. You didn't fear. You didn't fear what you saw in the promised land because you crossed over into the promised land and you didn't fear what you saw. You didn't fear the opposition. You didn't fear the giants in the land. You slayed them. And so God is saying that he is, you know, this is, this is him showing you appreciation. Like you, you, you took him at his word. And so this is also the, the month um, beginning from the 18th of Tammuz until the third of Av, I believe it's the third of Av, or the ninth of Av. It's a time where they call it, it's called between the straits. And that is the time, so if you know what a straight is, T, uh, S T R A I T, a straight is a, is a body of water. It's a narrow body of water. And so it's called between the straits because you're passing from one side and you have to go through this narrowing into the into get to the other side into the open expanse of water and so you guys are getting ready to now go through this this um between the straits season as well where you're crossing over you're going you're getting ready to go into what god has for you but things are going to get a little narrow for a seat for a moment you're going to feel like a, a um how do you say like a like a pressing almost like how can I say it, Lord? Give me the words to say it in the right way. Like a, like a season where things are going to get tight for you. I'll say it that way. Things are going to get tight, just, but, it, but it's a short, short time, a short process. But this tightening, this pressing, this pushing even, is going to bring you out into open expansion. Okay, so you're getting ready to be pressed. It's kind of like when you press the, 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 the grapes or you press the olives and you get the oil or you get the wine. That's what's getting ready to happen for you. Like God is getting ready to press you because you're getting ready to receive this, this overabundance of oil, this over, that, which represents what? The anointing, the glory of God. You're getting ready to re get this overabundance of wine, you know, um, new wine skins full of oil, you know, you, I mean, full of wine. You're getting ready to get all of this as you go through this, this, these, next, I will say three to four weeks, you're going to start to see that pressing happening, this movement happening, and it, you're moving forward. So it's not a bad movement. So don't think that the pressing is bad. It's not a, a bad season at all. It, it's going to feel like more like, I, I, I will say more like pressure because you're transitioning. So like the pressure is like, oh my gosh, I got to get this done. I have to get that done. I have to do this. I have so much to do. I have to do. It. That's what it's going to be like. 
Not like, oh my God, I have to go through it again. No. Remember, I told you the other day, the Lord gave me the word and said that the warfare is over. So it's not about warfare at this time. It's about you going into your new season and it's, you know, much is given, much is required type of scenario where you're going to have to go through this season of like adjusting. And so it, you, as you're moving into the open expansion there, like there's going to be like this, this just this pressing, like this tightening of things. It's like, okay, thank you, Holy Spirit. It's like when it says, when, when you hear that um, someone says, you know, you know, straighten up and fly right, tighten your, you know, tighten up, buckle your seat belts, that type of thing. You are getting ready to go through that process because you're getting ready to move into the open expansion. You're getting ready to move out into the open. And so this word is also, it's, um, well, you know what, let me read this first because I want to read about Joseph. Genesis chapter 41, verses 38 to 43. It says, and Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the spirit of God is? I'm going to stop there for a second because that's what you are now. Like you are a servant of the Lord and the spirit of God is in you. And it says, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. You have gleaned and have gained wisdom and knowledge, guys, in your ordeal, in your Job season. You have gained the wisdom and knowledge that you need to be able to now be a leader, a governor. It says, thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. So the Lord is saying, he's getting ready to put many of you into ministry over his house, right? You're getting ready to be put into ministry in, 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 in business aspects, in church aspects, um, you know, within the body of Christ, within the corporate world, you're getting ready to be put into this position where you're going to have this authority because you have the wisdom you, you heeded and learned of God. So you have this wisdom and knowledge to be able to impart now to others. And so he says, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled only in the throne will I be greater than you. So the Lord is saying that, you know, He's given you this level of authority, but don't forget that he is the king of kings. He is the one that has given you this. And, you know, Deuteronomy, um, not, I'm sorry, Psalm, in the book of Psalm, it talks about uh, David says, God has spoken once and twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God. So God has given you power, but he wants you to know that the power still comes from him, that he's still the, the, the one at the top, right? So it says, and Pharaoh said unto, uh, unto Joseph, see, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. So you're going to even have this authority over the, the, the place of bondage. Like you're, you're going to have this authority to be able to help bring others out of bondage. Okay. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand. Guys, a ring, when a king has a ring, a signet ring, it represents his authority. It represents like it, it, when you have the king's ring, it represents you are the one, you are the head person in charge, right? And so that ring, it, it can be used as a signet ring to be used to sign uh, as, as a seal to mark something that it's in the king's name. And so that's what you have. God has given you this authority to say that what you're going to do is going to be done in the king of kings name. It's going to be done in Jesus name. It's going to be done in God's name that what you do will be for God. Okay. And it will be, it will represent God. And so it says, um, and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen. Now, fine linen not only represents um, priests, but it also represents a king because the king wore fine linen as well. So just like Jesus says, know, you, uh, know ye not that ye are kings and priests in the book of Revelation. He says, know ye not that ye are kings and priests? Yes. This is what the Lord is saying. He's giving you that. He's, he's, he's made you a king and priest. You are now um, of that royal priesthood. Okay. And put a gold chain around about his neck, uh, about his neck. The Lord is about to adorn you with his glory. You are about to be adorned with the Lord's glory. Okay. And, and why? A neck represents something being yoked. So you are, you are being yoked with God's glory. You are being yoked as a disciple of God. And that's the other thing that I want to say about Tammuz, because I said that it represents a, um, a tribe and also a, a letter of the Hebrew alphabet. In the book of Tammuz, I mean, excuse me, in the month of Tammuz, the letter associated with the, with the month of Tammuz 
is the letter Chet, C-H-E-T, Chet, right? It is the eighth letter of the Hebrew alpha, uh, alphabet. So we know eight means new beginnings. It means starting new, right? But also the letter Chet represents a fence. It represents a, a, a lentil as well. It represents discipleship. So these are the things that you're entering into now in this month. Now, it's understand that you have God's protection. That was the word that the Lord gave me to release the other day. You have been, you are protected by the Lord. Why? Because you are now his disciple. And it says, and he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had. The second chariot, that is, that is, it's kind of like saying president and vice president. Like you are the vice president. Like, you know, you have that kind of authority. I'm, when I'm being, you know, a little extra when I say that, but you're, in a, you're, you're being placed in a high level of authority. Okay. And it says, and they cried before him, bow the knee. This word today is, is the public announcement that the Lord is making to his children. You are getting ready to be honored. It says, and they cried before him, bow the knee. Bow the knee is, 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 is when someone is being celebrated. When you look up the word um, Judah, uh, it means to be celebrated. But when you go and you uh, go to the derivative of the word or, or the root word of the, of the word Judah, it talks about kneeling down. It talks about bowing the knee. And so you are about to be celebrated openly. You are about to be celebrated openly. And this, this message that the Lord has given today is, is, is your announcement. Like it is the Lord saying, um, get ready because something is about to happen in your life. Okay. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Now, Egypt, when you look in the, the Hebrew of the word Egypt, it, re, it, it, it talks about different things. It talks about limits, it talks about bondage, it talks about the adversary, and it talks about distress. So God has given you authority over bondage, okay? And what kind of bondage? The enemy's distress. Like you are getting ready to help people come out of bondage. Those who have been bound by sin, those who have been bound by the enemy's distress, those who have been bound in any kind of way by the adversary, you are getting ready to, to, to be one of the, the remnant people who are going to help one of the Josephs who are going to be able to help bring people out of bondage. Okay. And so <laughs> the Lord gave me an idiom as well. And the idiom is in a nutshell. Now, if you ever heard that idiom, the phrase in a nutshell simply means to make a long story short or to sum up something, or to come to, to the point of what you're discussing. The Lord is about to cause your long story to come to a conclusion. So he's saying to make a long story short, your story has been very long. Your, your trials, your testing has been very long. But what is about to happen, the Lord is about to, <laughs> he's about to, to show you why your story had to be long. He's about to show you why um, you had to go through everything that you went through. He's about to sum it up for you. There's about to be a summary in your life, a summation of what your experience has been about. Because the Lord is, is he's, he's making this publicly announcement, you know, this public announcement um, that he's getting ready to give you a gift. He's getting ready to give you the gift that he told you he was going to give you. And so in a nutshell, I love, and when I saw it, I kind of chuckled because I'm like, really God, in a nutshell? You know, in a nutshell, God is getting ready to make, he's getting ready to bring a conclusion to your story. He's getting ready to, like, there's getting, you know how you say, um, and they live hap happily ever after, um, the end. Like, that's what is getting ready to happen now. You're getting ready to experience your happily ever after. You're getting ready to experience the end of the book, okay? And so, I want to go now. into the rest of the word. So the Lord says this, he says, and this is the gift to set you up on high in the mount of promotion, which you shall receive of me. Material and spiritual wealth, glory, honor, blessing, mercy, 
authority and strength, wisdom and money, to be firm, strong, and long-lasting. So this is the Lord. The Lord is giving you an accurate description of what you are about to receive from him. Like literally, he's saying that I'm setting you up on, on high in your mountain of promotion and you're getting ready to receive this from me. Material and spiritual wealth, glory, honor, blessing, mercy, authority and strength, wisdom and money to be firm, strong and long lasting because only what you do for Christ will last. That's, the, that's what comes to my head right now. Only what you do for Christ will last. And because you did everything God has told you to do, now you are going to, it, you, what God gives you is going to be everlasting. It's going to be, it's never going to be taken away from you because you did what God told you to do. And it's going to cause you to be firm and strong in the Lord so that you can do what God has called you to do with power and might and authority and strength and wisdom and the finances that you need to do. You're going to have glory. You're going to have honor. Okay. The blessings of the Lord are getting ready to overtake you. And so the Lord says, come gather together as a company for the cause to be proclaimed and yell with a boisterous tone, afflicted, anointed, and appointed chosen children of a low degree, the humble and meek. So this is what the Lord is saying. It's time for when, now, when you think of a company, yes, we think of a company in the business world, but also a company is also an army, right? Uh, <laughs> it's funny because the, the song Bo Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy just came to my head. The company B, company B. <laughs> it, what is it? Um, he was a famous, he, he was a famous trumpet boy from out Chicago way, you know, that song. Uh, He's in the army now, and then everybody. He's the boogie boogie bugle boy of Company B. That song, that song. <laughs> I don't know why the Lord just gave me that. That's funny, but Company B. And it's funny because now when I think of the letter B, it, it means a house. It means um, a son. It means uh, the letter B in Hebrew is Beit, and Beit means a house. It, it represents a son. It, um, S O N. It represents. Um, going within, like within. There, there are a couple other things that it represents as well, but it's funny, company B. So I'm, the way I see it, as it, even as the Lord has given, because that's not on my notes, as the Lord is even giving, giving me that phrase, the company B, company B, the army of sons and daughters, the army of sons and daughters. That's the way I, I receive that right now. Thank you, Lord. Um, so he says, come and gather as a company for the cause to be proclaimed. So you guys are getting ready to be proclaimed. You're, I, the, I see the army and the army is like on graduation day when they have been promoted from boot camp. So, and not only that, but when there are ceremonies, when um, people who are in the military are promoted to a new rank. And so that is what is getting ready to happen to you. It says, yell with a boisterous tone. Like you, you are, you, you have, you are appointed and anointed as a chosen child of God who was humble and meek. And this is what the Lord says that you are about to receive uh, as being a part of that company, that company in, in, in the army of the Lord, the remnant that is rising, right? It says, for it shall be upon my chosen people huddled together. It shall be upon all the rulers accepted to advance as the chosen that rule with God, intensively precipitated towards a position that is near to the word of God shall be upon my chosen people huddled together. It is enough of the wallowing in your flesh. So the Lord is saying, come together now, get yourselves assembled, understand what is getting ready to happen to you. He said, because this is what is about to come upon you. He's getting ready to cause something um, to be sent to you suddenly so that you can go into your position that deals with the word of God. So whatever it is that you are doing in ministry, whatever you are doing in business, God is getting ready to send you what you need so that you can be able to do this. Now, I know I've spoken about that before in prior videos, but the, this word is saying that it is about to happen. That's what this word is. It's a herald, right? The Lord is saying that something is about to happen. And, and, and he said, why? Because it's enough of your wallowing. Like you're no, you're not going to be wallowing in your, in your flesh anymore. 
you know, wallowing in pity, self-pity or uh, depression or, uh, you know, being weary and well-doing, being faint. All of that is over with. The wallowing is over with. That season, the season is done with. So please know that. Okay. And then the Lord says here. Also, even then, forthwith, immediately he called forth their names by order of command. Now, what is an order of command? Again, going back to the army when they go, when they're being promoted in the army. The order of command, or also called chain of command, is a hierarch um, hierarchical structure that shows how authority and responsibilities are distributed within an organization. Now, when the Lord said this to me, um, he, he says, also, even then, forthwith, immediately, he called forth their names by order of command. Many of you, every, every, every last person, every Joseph, that has gone through you your every we all went through the wilderness season but everybody's wilderness was different and, and it's because the the promotion that you were called to is going to be different we're not all going to be called to the same uh type of joseph so they're going to be as far as ranks are concerned there will be some josephs who are going to be you know generals they're going to be some josephs who are going to be you know lieutenants they're going to be you know there's different levels according to the wilderness to your level of warfare is what you're going to be rewarded um, with right how, how the level of warfare that you had to endure is what you're going to receive as a reward okay so some others some people had to endure more warfare than others so there's a greater reward for you and that's what the lord is saying um you are going to receive a greater reward uh, according to your deeds you will be rewarded that's what the lord is saying but in your position of rank as well like you're going to be very high so get ready for that, okay? Moreover, they put away suffering for a yield in a place and time of departure, cessation, completion, and reversal. Get ready, guys, because that's what's getting ready to happen. The Lord is saying that your suffering is over. You have graduated to the next level, to the next uh, life journey. You are getting ready to experience your departure. You're getting ready to experience the cessation of all that the enemy did to you. You're getting ready to experience the completed work of God, the finished work of God. And you're getting ready to experience um, the reversal of everything that the enemy did. Genesis chapter 50 verse 20 comes to mind. You meant it for evil, but God turned it around for my good. That's what is getting ready to happen for you. Everything that the enemy meant for evil, God is getting ready to turn it around for your good. Okay? Their father conferred the gift in the place and time of rest upon the ship to which they are joined that is currently occupied with the intermediate positions of the hirelings paid for services, both good and bad, and they departed on their way following him. So guys, the Lord is getting ready to give you, um, he's getting ready to give you the gift that he's promised you. And it is in the place of time of rest, meaning that you are now entering into the Lord's rest. Upon the ship to which they are joined, so the Lord is putting you on a ship and on this ship, because I, I, the Lord also gave me a word, uh, I think it was like three or four words back talking about a ship that was going to have some people that were going to follow you into the ship um, as you depart. So the Lord is saying here that those people that are there are people who also were laboring in ministry, people who are also laboring in business and entrepreneurship, um, things like this. But you have been promoted to where they are now going to um be listening to you that you these are some of the people that you will be imparting to not only that but this ship that you are going on that where there are some people on there who have been serving in ministry already you know it could be you know as pastors evangelists prophets teachers you know apostles you know bishops or whatever it may be whatever capacity it is that they've been serving their time they they haven't done it with a spirit of excellence if i can say it that way they haven't done it with with, with the way that God is, and some of them did the best that they could. Let me say it that way. Some of them did the best that they could, but they could not reach the level that God was, was trying to have them go to, but you did reach that level. So now, and I've talked about this in a prior word as, uh, before as well, that there's like a changing of the guard that's been happening. And so some of you are gonna be 
you know, some of the people who are going to be changing positions with some, you know, we see pastors that have been stepping down left and right lately. We see pe prophets who have been being exposed. We see, you know, people who are uh, being, uh, you know, put out on front street, you know, being accused uh, of, of immorality and things like this. Well, guess what? God is, is going to show mercy to, to people who repent. He always does. The Bible says in, in, in um, Psalms, he's always ready to forgive. So these ones who are in the ship are, are people who are going to, uh, to be repentant, to want to know how to do it the right way, to want to learn how to be better. And you, because you went through all of it, you're going to be able to help these people. And so um, with that being said, the Lord talks about hirelings. So here, let's read what it says in John chapter 10, verse 12 and 13. It says this, but he that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. So these people have been hirelings some of them have been hirelings in other words they they've they've <laughs> they were in ministry but they did not do right as god told them to do so these are people who who did not you know when 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 they saw things get hot in the church they 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 abandoned the sheep you know they kind of but there are going to be some people who have repentant hearts who are going to get in that ship because they want a second chance they, they, they're going to get in that ship because they want to, to, to repent. They want, some of them are going to have, thank you, Holy Spirit. Some of them are going to have that contrite heart, a broken spirit and a contrite heart, that they are going to be repentant for what they did. And these are going to be people that you are, are going to help to restore. Okay. Um, yeah. And that's the word. <laughs> I was looking to see if there's anything else, but there isn't. So that's the word, guys. Get ready because the Lord is saying, this is your herald. Happy birthday. Happy delivery. A delivery. Okay? Something, a supply, a provision. Okay? And I'm even thinking of the word deliverance in this moment. Where God is getting ready to deliver you out of your current situation. So get ready, guys. The Lord says, happy birthday, Joseph's. This word is my herald to publicly announce that I am conferring my gift upon the Josephs ready to rule. I pray that this word bless you guys. I pray, take it to the Lord in prayer to make sure that this is a, a word that is for you specifically and ask the Lord, what should you do with this word? Get the instructions for this word concerning you if it, if it is confirmation for you. Um, I want to thank all of you. Um, even yesterday, I posted uh, a testimony on the community page. Check out the community page. It was a beautiful testimony about uh, one of the sisters on this channel who comes to the intercessory prayers on Mondays. And she um, she got her breakthrough. So I'm telling you, this is the time and season where breakthroughs are getting ready to happen. The remnant of, of God is getting ready to step into their expansion, into the open season. Also, I wanted to tell you before I end it, because I talked about the month of Tammuz. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The month of Tammuz is also the tribe associated with the month of Tammuz is the tribe of Reuben. And so Reuben was Jacob's firstborn son. Let me get the scripture up just really quickly. So, yeah, Reuben was Jacob's firstborn son, but Jacob, uh, Reuben didn't receive an inheritance because he basically, like, took his father's concubine, you know, so he didn't receive an inheritance. But the Bible says that it was Reuben who, who was great, who was good to Joseph. Like, he, he helped Joseph in whatever it is that he needed. And so... He was the one that stood up for Joseph. He was the one that Reuben was the, that was, was the one that was connected to Joseph. Like even though, you know, Benjamin and Joseph were, were the only two full blooded brothers that uh, came from, I believe it was Rachel. Right. But 
the name Reuben means behold a son. And when I saw that, the Lord spoke to me and gave me this verse, this Bible verse in First Chronicles chapter 22, verse 9. It says this, behold, a son shall be born to thee who shall be a man of rest. And I will give him rest from all his enemies round about for his name shall be Solomon. And I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. Guys, this is what the Lord is saying right now. This is why the Lord said happy birthday. And he put birth, B-I-R-T-H hyphen day, not birthday as in like the festival itself of celebrating yourself, but birth day. That's why I keep separating it. So the Lord is saying, you've been born. You are a son now. You are a daughter. You are a disciple. And so he's saying that you, are, you shall be a, a man or woman of rest. You have entered into the Lord's rest and you are getting ready to experience the rest of God. And you're going to be at rest from your enemies. He's going to get this new season, this new season of beginning. He's going to give you rest from your enemies. And you shall be named like you're going to receive this new name. Remember, Joseph also received the new name. That after he received everything that he received from the king and he, after he did, he went, uh, um, they promoted him around the country of Egypt um, saying, bow the knee. The Bible says that he gave him a new name. Guys, you're getting ready to have a new name. You're getting ready to, and I, and I uh, spoke that in another word, I think it was two words back as well, that God is getting ready to cause the people who had rumors about you before and were talking about how, you know, talking down about you and saying how worthless you were or whatever the case, you get your name. The new rumor about you is going to be a, a name of honor, a name of glory, a name of, uh, uh, of authority, a name of power, a name uh, uh, that has this, that carries the spirit of God. Like that's what's getting ready to happen now. And so he says, and I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in those days. The, the children of God who have, who have gone through, the Josephs that have gone through are about to experience the peace of God, the quietness of God in their time. It is your time to experience God's peace. It is your time to experience God's rest. Okay? So, again, take that word to the Lord. I wanted to read that scripture to you because that's what how the Lord, um, when, he, when I saw that it was a tribe of Reuben, and I thought, oh, wow, the firstborns. Many of you are firstborn sons. I'm a firstborn son as well. So, um, that... The Bible talks about how the firstborn son receives an inheritance, right? Even when, when the blessing fell upon, it came time for Jacob to die and Joseph took Ephraim and Manasseh to get, to get blessed. Remember, it was um, Manasseh who was born first. So he should have received the right hand blessing of Jacob. But Jacob deliberately crossed his, his hands and put the right hand blessing on, Man, on Ephraim. And so... Manasseh, and remember the Bible says that Jacob, was, I mean, that Joseph was like, no, father, no, you know, Manasseh was first born. He's like, yeah, Manasseh would be a great, uh, a great nation, but Ephraim is going to be the one that's really going to prosper. And it's cool because the name Manasseh means made to forget and Ephraim means to be fruitful. So it's the fruitfulness, like he discerned it in the spirit, you know, that you know, the fruitfulness, the, the, the fruitful nations, the multitude of abundance was going to come from Ephraim. And so that's what's getting ready to happen, guys. You are getting ready to experience the rest of God, the peace of God. And that peace of God, the shalom of God, that's where Solomon comes from, the shalom. You're getting ready to experience that peace. And that peace entails being settled in God. It means being at ease in God. It means being um, healed in God. It means being prosperous in God. It means being fruitful in God. It means to dwell with God. It, that's what the shalom means. It means nothing missing, nothing broken. Okay. So get ready for that because that the Lord is saying it's getting ready to happen. That's why he's calling this a herald. Okay. Herald, H-E-R-A-L-D, herald. Okay. So get ready for that, guys. Take this word to the Lord and pray. He's saying this is this prophetic word of encouragement today is your public announcement to let you know to get ready because something is about to happen. Okay. Again, take this word to the Lord in prayer. If this is your first time coming to the channel, God bless you. Welcome to the channel. Do me a favor, hit the notification bell and hit the like and share and subscribe button so that you can also get notified when I'm uploading videos or going live. I do intercessory prayer every Monday night at 9.15 Eastern Standard Time, uh, 9.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also all of my information, feel free to look around the channel. 
all of my information is listed in the home page of the channel just click on the more uh, section and you can find all the information if you want to write me a testimony if you want to write me for prayer um, guys do me a favor though because I'm starting to get really 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 long emails <laughs> if you guys could do me a favor try to condense your testimony a little bit because you have to please remember that there you're not the only person writing so I want to be able to get to everybody so try and condense it as much as possible so that I can be able to get to everyone and be able to respond to everyone because I'm reading, some of you are writing books. <laughs> so I just want to be, be you know, and I, I'm appreciative of it and I want to be able to read everybody's email, but I also want to be able to get to everybody. So it, it's, it's a little challenging to be able to do that when I have to read such, such long emails. So do me a favor, try to keep your emails condensed, okay? Um, all of the information is there. There are memberships on this channel as well that you can join. We offer Bible study, uh, Christian life coaching, mentorship, uh, spiritual warfare training, you know, um, am I missing something? The Christian chat, which also is going to be happening tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Christian chat. And yeah, so look in the community section. You can see all the details about what each membership offers. If you feel led by the Lord that you feel like you want to sow into this word or into this channel, feel free to do so. All the information is there on the um, more about section of the channel as well. And I think that's it, guys. I, I love all of you with the love of the Lord. Thank you for rocking with me the way that you do. All of those that are longtime subscribers. And again, welcome to all the new subscribers. And Make sure, guys, that you are in alignment with God's word. I, have, I'm, I, want, I feel led to say that again. Make sure that you are in alignment with God's word. Make sure that you are living a lifestyle that pleases the Lord. Make sure that you have a repentant heart because we are entering into that time of judgment that I spoke about from April. So if you have not watched that uh, April 8th video, you need to go back and watch that as well because things are getting ready to start, you know, getting a little, um, yeah, topsy-turvy. So just be prepared for it. The judgment of the Lord is, is, is falling and it's going to fall a good judgment and bad judgment. It's, it's both. Remember I, the word that I, re that I released um, last week. God is resetting the scales. So get ready for the reset. Get ready because things are getting ready to move. Things are getting ready to go. Like it's, it's go time. Okay. So just be ready for that. I love all of you with the love of the Lord. And until the next time, take care and be blessed.